Hey guys, it's Jim. How you doing? I, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the tone curve or also known as the curves filter in Luminar. I did a video a couple of weeks back or so and I'll put a link uh, right there that you can take a look at but uh, I recommend you watch that video first. It's, ver it's very basic. Uh, it's, I think it's maybe five minutes or something and it just covers really what the curve filter is and I'll touch on that some here but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and so I think that first video would be good for you to watch before you watch this one. So, you've got the link, uh, check it out. Uh, I'm gonna go add the curves filter. So I'm gonna say add filter and curves. And uh, as you learn, uh, or will learn in that other video, uh, it's very powerful. It's an incredibly powerful filter. In fact, it may be the most powerful filter because you can do all sorts of adjustments to the tones and the uh, contrast and that sort of thing. But you can also significantly alter colors uh, in an image. And that's what I'll be doing with it today. So let me show you here. Uh, there's basically four different components in the curves filter. RGB, which is this combined tool. It's got this white line here. And then you've got R for red, uh, G for green, and B for blue, RGB, right? So there's uh, different channels for each color. And then this sort of combined one, which helps you uh, sort of orchestrate how you're going to do the tones and the contrast and that sort of thing. So let me start here. Uh, that is white, that's gray, and that's black. Uh, white is highlights, gray is midtones, black is shadows. Um, this, uh, this top end basically represents the highlights. And so I'm going to drag it to the left. So generally that direction, although I don't know if that'll come through in the video. Anyway, uh, up and to the left is basically an increase and down and to the right is basically a decrease. So if I want to increase the highlights, I go like this. You can see all the highlights are getting brighter. If I pull it this way, all the highlights are getting darker, right? I'm gonna do the same with the shadows. If I go to the right, that's basically down, all the shadows are getting darker, right? And if I go this way with the shadows, everything goes up and it looks kind of foggy. It's basically a faded sort of a, you know, neutral look. Um, and that's because I'm removing the shadow. Now, midtones are in the center, so you can drop a point there and you can do the same thing. You can say, I wanna increase the midtones and basically kind of leave the highlights alone. Um, or I can come this way and say I want to drop the midtones and kind of leave generally the highlights and the shadows alone. So I'm going to reset that. Now here's something else a lot of people do, and I talked about this briefly in the last video. People drop a point there and a point there, and they'll just make sort of a gentle S-curve, right? And that really helps give you a little bit of pop, a little bit of contrast to your image, which is great, very helpful. Uh, if you look before, it was a little bit washed out. This is a single exposure. Frankly, it's terrible. The, the lighting's horrible. All these yellow lights just really don't make for a very attractive uh, photo environment, but we're going to change that. Um, but adding a little bit of contrast, uh, like I did with this S-curve, helps quite a bit. So that's one thing you can do. Now, another thing you can do, though, is let's say you want to move uh, the shadows, but you don't want to... Uh, impact the entire S-curve. So actually, let me reset that. If you go like this and grab this shadows, if you notice, all this is moving too. So everything kind of moves. And if I go this way, I'm pulling the whole uh, line down. Well, maybe I don't want to do that. So you can drop these anchor points like that, and then you can come in here and do this. And look at the impact now. A much more subtle impact on that portion of the line, which means a, a much more subtle impact on the highlights in this case. And so you could do the same thing up here with highlights. Um, drop an anchor point there in the center, and maybe you want to just mess with the highlights. Notice it's not completely jacking up your, your shadows, and vice versa, right? Go this way. So that's, that's a, uh, something to keep in mind, is you can drop multiple points. I call them anchor points. They probably have a, a, a real name, but they can sort of help you anchor a particular section of that tone curve, and uh, that's, that's a great use of it. So now... Forget about all that, we're gonna go into the colors. So RGB, red, green, blue, those are your primary colors. And now, if you wanna increase, um, let's say uh, red, remember, increases to the left, so, and I'm at the top, so I'm in highlights, so more red is coming into the highlights, and if I wanna to go to the right, or excuse me, down, I'm going away from red. Well, array away from red is the cyan, so let me show you something. Uh, let me get it here, here we go. Color wheel, right? I pulled this off the internet, a Google image search, but R, G, and B, right? Red, green, blue, those are the primary colors uh, in photography, right? And in digital uh, photography here. And so 
red and green and blue, and you can see how these interact, right? Red and green make yellow, green and blue make a sort of a cyan, and red and blue make a magenta, and the center's white. We're not really caring about white right now. But let me show you something. Uh, let me get back to Luminar, here we go. So red, more red that way, away from red, right? What do I start getting? Uh, let me I'm keep getting into the wrong thing. When I'm going away from red, I'm going to the opposite end, end of the color wheel from it, which is cyan. So the opposite of red is cyan. So here, when I'm going away from red, I'm getting more cyan, right? So interestingly, uh, keep that in mind, right? I'm gonna reset that, let me get back on red. Same thing here, if I want more red in the shadows, I go that way. If I want less red, I go this way, it gets more into cyan, right? So same thing with green and blue, right? So look at the color wheel. The opposite of green is magenta, right? It's the opposite color, it's across the wheel from it. So if you want more green in the highlights, which I don't know why you would, but there you go, get more green. And if you want less, hey, you start getting magenta, right? Same with shadows, right? If you want green in the shadows, you go up. If you want uh, less green in the shadows, you go the other way, it takes you into magenta. And then blue, one more time with the color wheel. The opposite of blue across is yellow, right? So if you go here, if you want more blue in the highlights, which actually looks kind of good in this photo, you go that way. If you want less, you get more yellow, right? We don't want yellow. And then same thing, shadows. If you want more blue in the shadows, you go up. If you want the opposite of blue, that's yellow. And that's the color wheel, right? And so basically in the curves tool, when you're adjusting the colors, I think it's handy to have this thing uh, nearby. And in fact, I'll show you where it is. I did another video a couple of weeks back about color balance, and I called it the magic of color balance. I'll put a link right here so you can go look at it. I highly recommend you take a look at it because let me show you something. I'm just gonna add the filter. I'm not gonna do anything with it, but if you look, what were we talking about? The opposite of red is cyan, the opposite of green is magenta, and the opposite of blue is yellow. That's what color balance is. It's the same thing. And so if you wanna keep these handy, now of course, you'll notice them as you start to drag these uh, colors. You'll say, all right, I'm getting more blue, well, less blue, oh, that's yellow. Okay, well, that ties up right there. So it should look familiar to you, right? So check out the color balance video. But I just wanted to point this out, and I'm not using this filter here. I haven't done anything with the filter, but I would just keep that in mind so that when you're making adjustments to the R and the G and the B uh, lines here on the curve tool, you know what direction you're going and what color you're going to result in. So if, let's say you look at this photo and say, you know, it was a beautiful night. This is Amsterdam uh, a few years ago, and there's some issues with the photo. It's a single exposure from a set of brackets, but you know, just ignore the blown out highlights and stuff. But if I was looking at it, I might say, you know, maybe I want to add a little more contrast. Maybe I want to, you know, give that a little bit of pop. Maybe I want the red to be a little less red, right? So maybe I want a little bit of cyan there. Maybe the green, I want to be a little more kind of, um, oops, not more green, a little more magenta. And maybe I want to be a little bit more blue, right? Uh, oops, I'm going the wrong way. I need to go more blue, right? To the left is more, to the right is less. So I was going more to the blue color, but with the red and green, I was going away from them. I wanted to go away from red to cyan, and I wanted to go away from green to magenta. You can do the same thing in shadows, right? I'm on blue. Maybe I want more blue in the shadows. That looks kind of cool, right? Uh, with red, maybe I want a little cyan, right? So maybe I want to do something like that. That starts to look kind of vintage, which is kind of cool. You can do a lot of vintage sort of stuff in uh, with the tone curve. We're not gonna cover that in this video, but again, I haven't used anything in color balance. I've made zero adjustments here, but look what I've done to the photo, right? Now, we've been in the video for a few minutes, but the actual adjustments to go from that to that were just, what well, I don't know, 10 seconds or something. So it's very powerful. I highly recommend you experiment with it. And if you don't uh, have something like this color wheel handy to keep things in mind, just open color balance. It's right there at your fingertips. You don't have to use it, but if you notice, it's also broken up by shadows, midtones, and highlights, right? Shadows, midtones, right? This is midtones and highlights. So midtones, I'm in blue. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm in red. Red's highlighted, right? I'm going away from red, so I'm getting more to the cyan in the midtones. Maybe I want to go more to the cyan. No, sorry, I'm in red. My my apologies. Uh, yeah, so cyan. Sorry, I'm I'm losing it here. So midtones, I'm going more to the red. I'm going less to the red, right? With green, midtones, I'm gonna go more to the green, I'm gonna go 
more to the magenta. That looks pretty good, right? Blue with the midtones. Now I've already compressed the blues, so it only goes to here. But midtones and blue, I'm going more to the blue. I'm going less to the blue, which is more yellow. I think more to the blue looks good. And again, much different photo after a couple of minutes of experimentation. All I really wanted to talk about here was how you can impact color significantly with the curves tool and the fact that color balance is basically a representation of the color wheel and it's also an interpretation of the curves tool. You have red, green, and blue. This is red, green, and blue. And you have the opposite of red, green, and blue. Drag these to get the opposite. Drag these to get the opposite. And by the way, color balance is broken into shadows, midtones, and highlights, right? Here you have shadows, midtones, highlights. Here, shadows, midtones, highlights. Or if you want, just, uh, you know, in any of these uh, lines, just grab the middle. That's the midtones. The upper section is the highlights. The lower section is the shadows. Experiment. Have fun. I invite you to spend some time. Check out the other two videos. The first one's on Curves Filter Basics. And the second one is about what I call the magic of color balance, which is really both of them, I think, are precursors to this video. So sorry, this one's run kind of long, but it's important to talk about. It's really cool stuff. And it really you can really get deep into this whole color wheel thing, right? Color theory and, you know, basically complementary colors sit across from each other. So red and cyan complement each other. Green and magenta complement each other. Blue and yellow complement each other. And so, you know, you can get a PhD in this color science thing probably. I don't know. It gets super complex. Um, but the very basics are the things I've talked about. I think it's important when you're, in cra when you're crafting an image and taking something that frankly looks horrible um, and you're wanting to turn it into something that's more aesthetically pleasing to your eye, at least to my eye, you may not like this, that's okay. Um, but the color wheel and color theory and all that stuff is important. You can achieve a lot in the curves tool. Use color balance as a guide if you want to, or if you're not comfortable with curves, just use color balance. It doesn't matter. I just invite you to experiment. It's all really cool. It's super interesting to me, and I think uh, you can get a lot done with just a very basic amount of work in the curves tool. Just keep in mind the whole idea of the color wheel and the color balance. And if you need to, bring that filter in just to look at it. I haven't even used it here. I've made no edits with color balance. I'm just using it to keep in mind what the spectrum of colors are for each of those three. And that's really it. It's kind of long. Again, I apologize. I like to make my videos a little bit shorter, but a lot to say about this one. Hope it helps. If you have any questions, let me, let me know. Thanks for tuning in, friends. I'll see you next time, and adios. See ya.